caught my cheating wife on our 30th anniversary in the arms of her boss, my world shattered. Then, I knew that my wife was a lover of flashy life, but I had never thought that one day she would leave me for a rich young athlete. I trusted her, you know, and showed her the most precious love that others dream of, but she didn't appreciate anything I had done for her. So she resorted to cheating with a young boy just because he was rich or more affording than I was. So I, male 52, met this wonderful, bubbly, yet respectful and sophisticated wife of mine, years back when I was still in university. Well, I was doing my second year in philosophy and science, meaning I was what they call a nerd. I was so obsessed with science and philosophy, so I was always on my books and experimentations. I loved learning about people's lives, especially the people from the past. My wife, female 51, was doing marketing studies at Boston College, which was not far from where I was residing at a student's accommodation. Our relationship was going really great, much to her friend's disapproval. I was glad that she was not ashamed of me in our relationship. I fell in love with her each and every day. As I was a nerd, as they would say, she understood me and my obsessions because she would sometimes go with me to historical sites. We connected very well. I remember when she used to call and ask if I had eaten, and if I had not eaten, I would hear a knock at my door, and there she was with a big container carrying food she had cooked. She knew how to take care of a man in every way. I loved her more for that. So we dated for a year until we elevated our relationship to the next level. That year I got an internship as an assistant professor in philosophy. It was going to be great for me in my dream career as I wanted to be a political scientist. The money I was making was enough for me to get my own place and proposed to Bianca, my wife. I proposed to her two months after she had moved in with me. That time she had also started her own social media marketing platform and she was doing pretty well in her job. I was really proud of her. She was also going to graduate that year, so things were going well on her side. Everything was going well on our side, if I may say. So as she was doing her social media marketing, she would sometimes go and meet up with either influencers or other people who needed her talent and skill in marketing. We were so happy and lacked nothing. She continued being the great fiance who knew how to take care of a man. She always made sure to come back earlier at home so she could cook for her man. I really appreciated her in my life. She had already met my family and they welcomed her very well. I mean, who wouldn't? She was a goddess inside and out. She was what we call beauty with brains and everything was settled after she had met my family. Well, nine months passed and we decided to tie a knot. We didn't want any drastic and attention-seeking wedding, so we opted for a nice intimate wedding ceremony with our close friends and family. While I didn't have any friends, my friends were my brothers, so I had invited a few of my colleagues. That was the day I had trapped myself in a deceitful and unfaithful situation in my life. Only if I had known that I was making the biggest mistake of my life. Five years later, my wife got promoted from the marketing company that she was working at from bringing a financial manager to chief financial officer, CFO. I was so proud of her and the achievements she had made. While on another hand, she got pregnant with our firstborn baby boy. We were so happy and so much in love, you know. I had also become a political scientist and life was great. Things also started changing in the five years after my son was born. Bianca was a lovely mother. I won't lie on that, but the company would get lots of clients that would want their agency to do the marketing, especially when there would be big events, meaning more money was coming and she had to make sure that the finances of the company were always on point. So we had to hire a stay-home nanny to stay with our son because we would both get super busy to the point that we would have to travel to other countries. Well, I would be busy like that. Time passed and she changed. She was no longer a present parent to the children. She was just distant, you know. I thought there was something stressing her out, maybe work-related, but when I asked her, she would say, work is fine. I don't want to lie. My wife's behavior really worried me and it was breaking my heart because we had a tradition that forbids us to do anything, either work-related or meeting up with friends because Sundays were for spending time with the children and go out as a family, more like taking the kids out to play games and have fun. But my lovely wife was no longer available on Sundays. She would go during brunch time and come back late at night when the children were asleep. <laughs> you know, sometimes when the kids are lucky to see their mother in the morning before going to daycare, they would ask Bianca if she could take them to daycare because they missed going with her. You wouldn't believe the excuse she gave the kids. She would say, oh no, babies, I cannot drive you to daycare today because mommy is in a hurry and I will be late for work if I start by dropping you off at the daycare center. To say I was disappointed by her behavior because it was affecting the children negatively. She was no longer a wife that I had chosen and fell in love with. She had become someone else that we don't know. She would even wear a coat and tie it like a gown she would say that she was going to a meeting with the finance team. Mind you, that time she had even changed her appearance, her smell. She had started wearing red lipstick that are usually worn by those who sell their bodies. 
I just don't know how many times I had tried to negotiate for some intimate moments, but she would complain about being tired and not in the mood. You know, when you have been married to a person for three decades, I take that as enough time to know your partner. If you know your partner like I do with mine, you would see that she was seeing someone else or she was doing something very bad that would even crush and destroy our marriage. As much as I wanted to stay hopeful that my wife would get back to being the wife that I loved and know, but I knew that I had to do something to get my wife back, you know. Our 30th anniversary was approaching and I knew that Bianca had forgotten about it since she was too occupied with whatever or whoever that she was busy with. I decided to plan a special and a surprise anniversary trip to the beach, hoping that it would bring us closer together and reignite the spark in our relationship. I booked a beautiful beachfront house complete with a private pool and a stunning view of the ocean, thanks to my assistant for finding the stunning place for us. I spent hours planning the perfect itinerary, complete with romantic dinners, sunset walks on the beach, and relaxing spa treatments. I wanted my wife to be happy, you know. The day of our anniversary trip finally arrived, and I was filled with excitement and anticipation. But Bianca seemed distant and distracted as we packed our bags and headed out the door, but I tried not to let it dampen my spirits. I was sure that that weekend was going to be the best and I was going to win my wife back. As we arrived at our destination, I was struck by the breathtaking beauty of the beach. The sun was shining, the waves were crashing and the salty ocean air filled my lungs. I felt a sense of peace and tranquility wash over me, and I knew that this was exactly what we needed. We spent the first few days of our trip relaxing and reconnecting. We took long walks on the beach, held hands and talked about our dreams and aspirations. It felt like the old US was back, and I was filled with hope and joy. I didn't know if my wife was really happy or if she was pretending to be happy just for my sake. But whatever mood she was in was great and refreshing because we enjoyed our day until she excused herself and said she had an important call to make to check on the marketing and finance team from work. I understood and excused her because I knew how much she loved her job and her position so she would always be fussy about it and check how it was every now and then. She was too overprotective of the company that she was working for like it was her own. I remember when I would complain about her spending more time at the office to a point that she would come home very late to make sure everything was running smoothly. She would tell me that she loves and respects her position at work so she would do anything and everything to make sure that her department was running smoothly. She would say that being a CFO needed all her love and attention so she was treating it like it was her own child before our three beautiful babies. So she had to protect their legacy any way possible even if he had an assistant, but she still wanted to run everything by herself. But my wife was not paying attention to me anymore. It was like we were there on a business or work trip and not our anniversary. She was always talking about business and the events that would happen not far from where we were even in our bedroom, which made me somehow bored because it was always a work conversation every now and then. Nothing about us. She was so excited about the event. It was like she was the one who was launching another branch. Even our intimate moments were no longer the same. I had thought the trip was going to help us reconnect, but I guess I was the only one who was investing in this marriage. As we were sitting by the pool, enjoying a refreshing drink before Bianca, my ex-wife, went to make an important call. I received a call from my assistant telling me that a very important man who was a professor in philosophy and is retired because of age wanted to meet with me since he was also not far from where we were visiting. I didn't waste any more time. I went to the hotel room and prepared for the meeting on the following day. I saw my wife glued on her phone, busy laughing and blushing. She didn't even notice that I was in the room. I tried telling the good news that my assistant had told me and guess what her response was. She responded by saying, hmm, which is something I was not expecting from her. She then told me to prepare for the launch as it was happening on that day. I was angry at her because she didn't tell me any time the whole time, then she told me to prepare. I knew that I had to find out what was making my wife so distant and always laughing and blushing with her phone. Their event happened, but I decided to go back to the hotel room earlier because my wife was too busy socializing with people. But I had noticed the way she was looking at her boss and the way they were laughing and touching each other. It was kind of disgusting, but because people are too ignorant, they didn't see what I saw. The next day I went to the meeting, I got back to the hotel in the mid-morning, mind you, that day was our last day of our trip. I had thought that by the time our trip ends, we would have put our differences aside and fixed our marriage. That time it was our anniversary day, and I had reserved it for us at a fancy restaurant opposite where our hotel room was. On the morning of our 30th anniversary, I woke up with a sense of excitement and pride. 30 years of marriage to the love of my life, Bianca, was something to celebrate. As I entered the hotel, well, our hotel had a living room. As I entered, I could hear faint laughter coming from the bedroom that we use. 
My heart swelled with happiness at the thought of my wife being in such high spirits on our special day. I mean, I had missed hearing her laugh so happily. But as I neared the living room, the laughter turned into hushed whispers. A sense of unease washed over me as I pushed the door open, only to be met with a sight that shattered my world. There in the arms of her boss was my wife, Bianca. They were locked in a passionate embrace, their faces illuminated by the soft glow of candlelight. My breath caught in my throat as I stood frozen in disbelief. How could she betray me like this on the day of our 30th anniversary? I asked myself why she wouldn't tell me if she was no longer happy. I asked what was going on and you would see that words got stuck in Bianca's tongue. My wife, or let me say my ex-wife, is actually not a person who just gets tongue-tied. She always has answers for everything, but that day she was stuck and she froze on the spot. It was like her mind went into another freezing zone and it couldn't think properly. My heart was beating pretty fast, I didn't know what to do. I was not angry, I was livid, furious, enraged. And the boss, on another hand, just sat there and looked me in the eyes like he was daring me to do something. I couldn't believe the guy. He should have just apologized and left, but no. He sat there waiting for whatever I was going to do. Later on the following day, my wife and I went back to New York. I didn't talk to her for the whole two days. The only thing I did on our way back home was glancing at me with eyes full of suspicion and anger. I was angry at her, but mostly I was angry at myself because I was certain that whatever she did, she did it because of me. But that didn't give her any platform outside our marriage to cheat, especially with her boss. Don't they have a code of conduct or policies or rules at her workplace? I mean, why would you date your senior knowing that it is against the company rules? So after a week of us back at home, I came back from work and asked to speak to Bianca. I'm sure that if she knew what I wanted to talk about, she wouldn't have agreed to have a talk with her, but she didn't know. So I sat her down and told her that I knew about what she did. She started getting confused because obviously I knew what she did. I mean, I saw her kissing another man, not just any man, but her boss. And I know that she had thought we were past that, but then I told her that I had found out about what had been going on between her and her boss. I simply told her that I couldn't believe the lies she had told him, so I decided to run an investigation to see if what I did with Jake was only a kiss he saw, or there was more to it. I told her that I saw a video of her at the club kissing another guy. I told her that she was just like all the other loose and cheap women, who were always looking for fun and good times with other men. I then told her to pack all her rags and get out of my house because I was not going to be responsible for what I would do to her, for deceiving and lying to me. I didn't feel like doing anything to her because I felt like it would be useless to do something to her and not get anything in return. I had to respect myself and my dignity because of my line of work. The following week, she was served with divorce papers. She tried fighting it, but the evidence that I had was too strong, so she signed the papers, and I was given 50% share of everything she has and owns. I then applied for full custody of our children. I didn't want my children to be exposed to a negative environment where my children would be introduced to many men because of their mother's evil ways. I love my peace, but I love my children more and I no longer wanted Bianca's pathetic self to have anything to do with my children. She may call them and ask them to visit her, but they were my own responsibility. In the days that followed, I experienced a roller coaster of emotions. I was consumed by anger, bitterness, and a deep sense of betrayal. I couldn't understand how someone I had loved so deeply could hurt me in such a callous manner. The pain was so intense that it physically hurt to breathe. But as the initial shock began to fade, I realized that I had a choice to make. I could wallow in my pain and allow this betrayal to consume me, or I could use it as an opportunity for growth and healing. I chose the latter. I sought therapy to help me process my emotions and make sense of the betrayal. My therapist helped me see that my worth was not defined by my wife's actions, and that I deserved to find happiness and peace in my life. I slowly began to let go of the anger and resentment, replacing them with acceptance and forgiveness. As I stood there in the midst of the wreckage of my past life and the memories of Bianca and myself from the first day we saw each other, I knew that the path ahead would be difficult and uncertain. But one thing was certain, I would no longer be shackled by the expectations of others and putting my love and trust in people, be ruled by the obligations of a broken marriage, I would be true to myself, follow my heart, and embrace the future with open arms, with a newfound sense of determination. The memories of our wedding day played in my mind like a movie reel. The vows we exchanged, the promises we made to each other, the love that had once been so strong between us. But now, it all felt like a distant memory, overshadowed by the affair that had consumed my ex-wife. I was grateful for the love, teachings, and everything she had given me. She gave me a chance in her life and spent the whole 30 years being in my life. 
as much as it's really hard to believe, but I have to in order to heal faster. Now all I do is live for myself and my children. My job is doing even much better, and I have started checking for historical sites that I would visit. It was time to let go and start afresh. Time to cry over a spilt milk was not going to work. So far I would say life has been good to me. Even Bianca had not called me, swearing at me and telling me that she wanted her children and I was very much grateful for that because I wanted nothing to do with her. I knew there and then that happiness is found within yourself and you create your own happiness without going out and doing things that you would regret later. I also learned that everyone was born alone so you shouldn't try and find happiness or validation elsewhere. You only have yourself in this world and no one else. But I learned that the hard way, but I'm grateful for the lessons I have learned. I also surrounded myself with friends and family who supported me unconditionally. Their love and encouragement gave me the strength to move forward and rebuild my life. I took up new hobbies, started exercising regularly and focused on self-care. I started to rediscover who I was outside of my marriage and found joy in the simple things in life. As time passed, the wounds began to heal and I found myself gradually letting go of the pain and heartache. I realized that the affair was not a reflection of my worth as a person, but rather a reflection of my wife's shortcomings and insecurities. I found peace in knowing that I had given my all to the relationship and that I deserved better. I know that most of y'all, especially men, would think I am weak for not ruining or making Bianca suffer, but sometimes it's just better to choose peace and let the universe do everything for you. Not everything needs violence, just leave everything as it is. Sit back and watch karma do what it does best. I mean, it visits everyone right. Eventually, I was able to truly forgive my wife for her actions. I released the anger and hurt that had weighed me down for so long and found a sense of freedom and peace in letting go. I wished her well and hoped that she would find the happiness she was searching for. I even changed custody for the children to join because I felt like every child needs their mother. I gave her strict instructions that she must not introduce my children to her men. My healing journey after finding my wife cheating with her boss was a long and arduous one, filled with pain and introspection. But through therapy, support from loved ones, and a commitment to my own well-being, I was able to emerge from the darkness stronger and more resilient than ever before. I learned that I am capable of overcoming even the most devastating of betrayals and that true healing comes from within. And for that, I am eternally grateful. I don't know if I made the right decision, though, to let my wife go just like that and not avenge my broken heart on how I dealt with Bianca's boss situation. I'm not a violent person. What do you think I should have done for what she did to my heart in our 30 years of marriage? Please help me with advice. How do you think I should have dealt with the issue?